Good evening and welcome to part two of our sermon series, Uncertain. Um, this is the sermon series covering very briefly the time of Easter, both from the Last Supper um, until tonight and then tomorrow morning with the crucifixion and resurrection. Um, I chose to do it in a two-part series so that you could hopefully watch them in line, but also be able to watch them individually if you so choose. Um, really appreciate you being here. We are, I don't know if you've heard, we're in the midst of um, some very unusual times in our uh, world, um, certainly in America, um, but the world is, is in the throes of the COVID-19. And it seems very fitting to me that we are in the Easter season during this time of such uncertainty. And so tonight I want to continue where I kind of left off um, on Thursday night, um, but understand hopefully if you're watching this one for the first time, hopefully this will still speak to you as much as possible. Um, this is very awkward for me being a pastor. We like to preach to people. Um, I'm currently sitting in our church with no one. Uh, and so I'm speaking to an empty crowd. So my apologies if I come off different than usual, I guess. Um, but it's, it's a very uh, uncertain experience if you want to use the, the title of the sermon. But if you will uh, join me, we'll start by uh, opening up a word of prayer, and then we'll get started on the text tonight. Lord God, I just want to thank you for uh, the ability to be here, the, um, the joy in being a part of, uh, of your work, even in the midst of such uncertain times. Lord, I pray that um, those that are listening, that are tuning in, um, that they are uh, allowed to learn, um, that they, they open the Bible and move forward in their relationship with you, which is ultimately the most important thing in this life. Um, Lord, for those that are struggling, um, whether it be with their own internal stuff or medical things or relational, um, we do pray that you step in and intercede on their behalf, that you bring the peace um, that surpasses understanding that you alone can bring, and, and that their lives begin to reflect and grow in you and everything that they do. Help my words to speak to what you want to speak to and not what I choose. Um, and Lord, I thank you for the blessings you give our church, each and every one of us um, in our country. And Lord, I pray that we um, take those blessings and reflect them back to you as you speak of in scripture. All of this I pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for uh, letting me pray. Um, whenever I preach, I always want to make sure that I'm trying to preach the words that I feel the Lord has given me and not just the words that um, sometimes as a pastor you tend to think you learn and are smart about things. Um, and sometimes that's not what Jesus needs to preach with. And so I appreciate you doing that. The last one, um, the un part of the uncertain, um, we spoke Thursday night on what they call Monday Thursday uh, about the historical significance of Jesus and how it played into this historical perspective of these very dark times. Uh, we discussed how the book of Malachi, which is the last book in the Old Testament, actually ends with talking about the return of the Lord. Um, but from that time forward, at least for what they call canonical texts that we know of, there is no definitive prophets. There's no definitive words of God coming into humanity's history. Um, and so it's 400 years of relative religious darkness where God is not speaking to his people. Now, um, you and I know that God is always speaking, but we don't have the same canonical text work that we do at the beginning of this history where we go through the great prophets and then we have the minor prophets. We don't go through some of the historical significance of the Jerusalem and Israel's growth and development. And so we have this 400 year window, which in religious terms, we don't see a lot. But what's amazing is that during that same time, you look at Alexander the Great is happening. Um, a lot of the Persian Empire is starting to move, although we hear about them in older biblical texts, they're moving in different ways. We have the Roman Empire beginning to come into there and assert their authority um, in the world. We have these gigantic civilization moves coming, and yet God goes what we, from what we can see canonically and, and textually, it goes silent. And so 
there's this really interesting period of time where God has been speaking through the Old Testament, speaking to people and growing these relational understandings of, I am trying to reach you. I'm trying to bring you back to um, Eden. I'm trying to bring you back to a relationship with me. God calling us. Um, but then we run into this period where it's dark before the time of Jesus, where ultimately God does get us back um, through the blood of Christ. And so Easter really is a huge celebration, not only in terms of the, the, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ, but it's an incredible moment in history because it's this, it's a bridge between what was the Old Testament come to me, the silence, and then Jesus's life and the manifestation of God on this earth. And so um, I really wanted to last time focus on that idea. Um, is that uncertainty leading to Jesus and what and how significant Jesus was in the scheme of history. And so now we've um, begun and have, have celebrated through the Last Supper um, where the apostles were with Jesus and he was saying, this is my body, um, break bread, drink wine, but do it in remembrance of me. Um, and so then that's the modern communion that we take now. And then we've moved through now the crucifixion. And so at this point, if we are going like the, the mirrored three days of what scripture speaks about right now, we are in the darkest time in human history. Because right now is the time between when Jesus is, ha, has been crucified and then tomorrow by how we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And we're going to speak to the resurrection tonight because this is when we do church. But, um, but really the idea of when to celebrate is not the most important, but it is a, a important in the sense of knowing in the time frame of biblical understanding where we are right now. Um, we're between the crucifixion and the resurrection. The resurrection is coming. But, you know, the apostles didn't know that. And so at right now in history, what we know is that we've gone through the dark period of human history. We've gone through a quiet period of God. We've gone through a whole period of God attempting to pull people back to him and them failing miserably over and over again. And now we have this dark period where the son of God, or at this time what we know of him as the claimed son of God, says, I am the son of God. I'm going to change the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he is crucified on a cross. And so in this period, this is the darkest in human history that the world has ever been. And we can't understate that because that's the uncertain times. Similar to where we are now, I mean, when you look at our lives and where we are now, where we're all in a shelter in place, we're staying at home, we're doing things and acting in ways we never thought we'd ever have. And we're in this uncertain time. And you see, that's the same thing as the Bible, is that right now Jesus has been crucified. And for, especially for the apostles, those who are be believers, but also for all of human history, this is the dark time of uncertainty of what now? And you see, in many ways, our lives are reflective of this time in Christ's ministry, because there is the crucifixion of who we are. There is the shaking of all of the idols in our lives. The things we go, is this true or not? Is this the thing I must be certain of? And then we are most of the time living in that dark place. Now, the thankful part and the awesome part is as a Christian, we have the resurrection next. We have that tomorrow. We have the next morning where we know what happens. And that's the certainty we rely on. But I often wonder about those that only have the beginning of the certainty, the quiet of their life leading up to God speaking, and maybe he doesn't speak to them. My hope is he does. But it's that quiet time, that dark, that uncertain time where they go, what is my life about? Who am I? And you see this time with COVID, it's been very interesting to me. I've been trained in the whole counseling field. I've been trained in ministry. I've been trained in tech. I've been and to watch humanity in the midst of this is just very fascinating. And I can only imagine Jesus up, uh, up above watching going, I, they don't get it, do they? Um, but what a time to be alive. So many idols are being crucified in this time, are being shaken to the very core. So many people that have these idols in their lives are getting shaken by this. 
those that have dreamt for money and prestige and power and are moving and moving and moving and now they're in a place where they cannot move and they cannot make money and they cannot gain that power. Those that are relationally certain that they have put an idol of a relationship in their lives and now they're p- with that person trying to understand why the relationship is not. The idol of self. I saw a meme the other day where it said, I always said I'd always clean the house when I had more time. And now that I have all the time in the world, I realize that is not the reason. How real is that? The idol of self. I can do it. It's just a matter of time, effort, money. You see, I think the apostles were here in this time in history too because they had just seen the person who they believed to be the son of God murdered on a cross. And they're sitting in a building. They're sitting together with a locked door. John says that they're in a locked room. Um, Mark and Luke echo that. Where they are away from everything. And they're afraid. And they don't know what's coming next. And so they're focused on all of these what ifs, the uncertainty of their lives. And then it's also interesting to think about all of the people that did not know about Jesus' execution and crucifixion. Have you ever thought about the people that are in another country that weren't a part of what was going on in Jerusalem at the time? They weren't a part of what was happening, and they're in another country. They don't know that Jesus was crucified. They're still living in the uncertainty of, I'm trying to make it day to day. And you have the apostles who thought he was the son of God. They didn't know yet the resurrection was coming. They'd been told, but they didn't know. And so the uncertainty of living in that. And I encourage you, realize the simple fact that sometimes we're going to be in an uncertain place. In fact, right now the world is in a more uncertain place than it's probably ever been for a long, long period of time. You see, Easter is simply not about one day or one moment or one. It's about the whole movement between his, resu- his, his crucifixion and resurrection. Because that's really what our lives are about. As Christians, when we say the phrase, dead in myself and alive in Christ, that's Easter. And as tomorrow, there will be many churches that will be broadcasting and preaching the resurrection. And I encourage you, listen to them. That's awesome. So many good words of God coming out. I just want to encourage you, think about it in terms of the start to the finish, not simply the finish. And as you sit there, and as you you are sitting in your house, if you're sitting at your table and as you are listening and preaching and teaching to yourself and to those that are around you and you are following Christ, I encourage you, think about the uncertainty. What things are you certain of in your life? What things have a place of prominence that you're like, that will be there tomorrow? Because you see, the apostles were in that place of trying to understand that right then. And they were saying, what now? What was my foundation, what what I was certain of, has just been crucified. Peter was so certain, and yet he denied him three times, just that night alone. What are you certain of in your life? Faith is a belief in something that you can't see. Faith is a certainty in something that you can't touch. Faith is a certainty in something that it's even hard to explain to anyone else. What are you certain of? I'm going to read from Scripture here. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in the strips of linen lying there, but wouldn't go in. 
Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. This is John 20, verses 3 through 9. It's echoed in Mark and Matthew, Luke. Jesus ended up appearing to many after that. It says that he taught for 40 days before his ascension. We know the story of Doubting Thomas. I won't believe until I actually touch the scars. My question is, do you believe it? As we come to tomorrow morning, as we come to the resurrection, when you come to the tomb of Christ, what do you believe? It's easy in this world to believe in a lot of things, right? I believe the economy will continue to function. Somewhat questionable now. I believe all my relationships will go really well because I've figured myself out. I'll leave you to judge that one. I believe in myself that I can be good enough. I can work hard enough. When you come to the tomb of Christ, when you tom- come to the stone that's rolled away, we are all confronted by the question. It is said that the disciple who reached the tomb first wouldn't go in, but once he did, he believed. I can't always touch faith. But in a time of such uncertainty, I can be certain it's true. (laughs) But can you? In your life, what are you certain of? And I'll try and help you. I've spoken before and said I'm not a good by the numbers guy. Here's four steps. Here's three dots. Here's four important points. I don't do well. But I'll try and help tonight. When it comes to the hard things in your life, when it comes to you getting to the point where you can no longer push forward, what do you fall back to? What's your fallback? When your energy is drained, what do you go to? That's a certainty. The thing that you will go to when it's hard. There's your certainty. Look at your life. What are you certain of? What's the thing you go back to over and over again? And my prayer and my hope is that you say the Bible, Jesus, God. My fear is, like for myself sometimes, I don't always choose that. Next thing. What do you believe about this world? Is this world certain? Not in the physical sense. I know that. But is this world and all of the works of humanity, is it certain in your mind? Can humanity do enough? And the third one, and I'm probably going to close with this. Are you certain there's an enemy? Are you certain that there's something, someone, some 
some entity that is attempting to take you and is attempting to take this world. You see, Jesus is my certainty. And because I'm certain in him, I'm also certain there's an enemy. You see, the enemy was behind Easter. Now God used it, and God brought Jesus into an incredible grace that we experience today. And so I do not want to say that the enemy won that. But I do want to say that the enemy attempted to. And in our lives, as the belief in Jesus comes, so must a belief that there is an enemy in this world. I leave you with this. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, whenever you celebrate Easter, I implore you, celebrate Easter for what it means. For the certainty that Jesus brings. Jesus comes, and he comes, and he gets crucified, but he comes back. And there's the moment in history that changes everything. Everything that was uncertain becomes certain, but it takes the cross. There is no certainty without it. For I am convinced neither death nor life, for I am certain that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things to come nor things present, nor life nor death nor any created thing will separate us from that love of Christ. I'm certain My question tonight is, are you? Are you certain of what your life is headed? Are you certain of what God wants in your life? Are you certain of where you're going when this life ends? This time has been a shaking of every certainty that I've ever known in my life, and I'm so grateful for it because it has brought me right back to the cross and going, I can be certain of this. He is risen. Amen. Amen. He is risen. Join me in a word of prayer. Lord, inhabit words. Lord, inhabit our minds and our hearts and our lives. Come in a way that only you can come. Bring your love and light into the world as only you can. Let Easter be the beginning of the fire that burns through the world. Lord God, in these times of uncertainty, I thank you for your certainty that we can move from the uncertainty of a life without to a certainty of a life with. Lord God, thank you. Lord, I pray for our world. I pray for leaders. I pray for those who are leading the country wherever and whatever position they may be in. Lord, I pray for those that are at home. I pray for those that are on the front lines doing the hard work. I pray for those that are leading us as a country. I pray for all. Bring healing, bring restoration, and above all, bring love. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for the Easter time from the crucifixion to the resurrection. I am certain. In Jesus' name, amen.